Welcome back! Well, it seems that tomorrow we'll get started on our mission to stop the Vanguard, or the Church of Voltec, as they're apparently called here in Stark. But tonight we should just relax, take it easy, enjoy ourselves. Well, where should we go to do that? Other than the fringe, of course. So let's head over there. Random people standing around here. Can't actually talk to them or anything, but they're standing around here. Ah, the good old Fringe Cafe. Let's talk to Charlie, let's see what's up with him. Pulling long hours today, Charlie? Unfortunately, yeah. Are you staying for the show tonight? What show? You don't know who's playing? I've had a few other things on my mind these past few days, Charlie. Sorry. Anybody good? Anybody good? Are you kidding? Roy and Dale's playing. It's the first gig on their new tour. Sort of returning to their roots before they do the big venues. Tonight? Great, that's perfect. Especially tonight. I need some serious unwinding. Yeah? What's up? <laughs> Why was he watching of looking the wrong way just now? I've never actually seen that before. Maybe it's a glitch. Um Well Charlie's our friend, I suppose he deserves uh the truth. I just had the weirdest experience of my life. Even though you probably won't believe it. Weirder than what happened here last night? Much weirder, trust me. I mean, what happened here could be explained. A hologram, rapture gas, mass suggestion. That's stretching it a little, don't you think? What? Rather than the alternatives? That we're all either going crazy or that something's breaking through from another world? You don't think that's stretching it? I don't know what I think, April. I just know that sometimes there are things lurking in the shadows that can't be explained by science. That the world holds more mysteries than we think. Maybe. So what's this thing you were going to tell me about the weirdest experience of your life? You wouldn't believe me anyway, Charlie. Try me. No, really, I can't. It's too much, too close. I don't know if I believe it myself. Okay. You tell me about it later then, alright? Maybe. She's being awfully non-committal all of a sudden. Let's ask her about this concert. And let's ask him about this concert. When does the concert start? In less than an hour. I expect the place to be crowded soon. So you should find yourself a spot to sit down. There's nobody here now. <laughs> or almost nobody here. Well, typically, my experience with concerts is that people will start showing up, especially with a, a big name, people will start showing up uh, hours in advance, the day before, even. Apparently not here. Is Emma around? Haven't seen her. But she knows about the show, so she'll be here. Thanks, Charlie. No problem. Later. Well... Let's find a seat for this concert, then. Oh, April's moving by herself now. Ooh, there's Emma. How convenient, because we were just asking about her. So where have you been all day? You didn't show up at school, you weren't at work, and then Fiona tells me you're out looking for Cortez again. And on top of that, Zack brags about bagging a date with you. What's up with that? Oh, shit. Zack, I totally forgot. Oops. He's gonna kill me. If I don't show up, that is. You mean it's true? You have a date with that asshole? I told him he was full of shit. I needed some information. And you sell yourself to get it? April, you're insane. Well, you're just going to have to disappoint him. I made a promise. To that sleaze bag? That's a promise made to be broken. 
Well, actually, I agree with uh, Emma. Zack's an asshole, and there's really no point in keeping that promise. Because I happen to know that if you do keep that promise, you'll just end up uh, walking out on him anyway. And since this is our last night before the start of our mission, we should just enjoy ourselves. Screw Zack. Although, not literally. Anyway. You're right. I'm staying here. Good girl. Now, there are a couple guys you should keep an eye open for tonight. Me? I have a boyfriend. You need a boyfriend. You need a boyfriend because I have one and I need somebody to compare boyfriends with. It's not your choice to make, girl. It's just the natural order of things. I thought we were here to listen to the band. Sure. From the back. So we can scope out guys' asses. I don't know which place is weirder. Mercuria or the Fringe Cafe on any given night. The Fringe Cafe. Mark what? Never mind. So, okay, which guys are we looking for? Right. Now, you may want to take notes. Chapter 3. Friends and Enemies. Oh, God. Headache. That's what you get. I didn't really have that much to drink. Did I? No. But I did travel through a shift into a parallel universe, which would explain this weird compulsion to curl up into a fetal position and go back to sleep. Not that I'm particularly looking forward to it, but I guess I have to go find that Warren guy Cortez told me about down on Hope Street. And hey, like that's not enough. I have to avoid bumping into Zack today. He's probably royally pissed that I stood him up, and Zack's very good at being pissed. Why do I have a feeling that she just uh, jinxed that by saying that she shouldn't bump into him? Anyway, new diary entry. Sunday, July 30th, 2209. Sundays are made for sleeping in. Sundays are made for walking around in baggy clothes, watching movies, nursing headaches, and hanging out with your friends at the cafe. Sundays are not made for going to the worst neighborhood in town to find a kid who might be able to give you the information necessary to infiltrate a powerful cult that plans to take over the known universe. That's what Mondays are for. Okay, okay, so the world's in mortal danger. And the only thing standing in the way of total chaos is me. And this morning, I have to go to Hope Street to talk to this priest called Raoul at the cathedral, so that he can tell me where I can find war news. Dear diary, note to self. The next time anybody says the word destiny, run like hell. Well, I guess we'd better get started. We have a universe to save, and it sure isn't going to save itself. Oh, gee, it's Zack. How surprising. So you thought you could stand me up and get away with it, bitch? Yes. I'm sorry. What did you call me? We have a date and then you don't show? Leave me looking like a sad prick all night in front of my friends? I couldn't go, Zack. Get over it. I don't fucking care. You'll regret fucking with me, bitch. I can promise you that. Oh yeah? You in what army? What are you gonna do? You'll find out, April Ryan. You're gonna be so fucking sorry you ever fucked with me. I thought the problem was that I didn't fuck with him. Okay. Well, that was nice. But like I said, you, can, you can't actually avoid this. If you pick the other option, if you do go uh, on the date with him, you'll end up walking out on him because he acts like a major jerk, as you might expect. And then you'll get him complaining about uh, that in basically the same conversation. So, not really anything you can do to avoid Zack getting pissed at you. But then again, do we actually care about that? No. I don't think so. At least I don't. 
Looks like Fiona's not home. TV is turned off. Well, we have to get to uh, Hope Street. And quite likely that means we have to take the subway. I'm not entirely certain if there's anything to do at the cafe this time. Let me just check quickly. But it looks like we're out of time. So we'll have to do that in the next video.